However you feel about Ed and Lorraine Warren, their legend is enduring. It's hard to put your finger on exactly what it is that made them so fascinating to generations of people. With a massively popular and successful cinematic universe chronicling their life's work and field research, along with their extremely popular museum of possessed items, they believed that they were warriors of God, fighting against a force from a dimension of terror and evil, and though they received a good deal of skepticism and scrutiny for their work, they maintained that what they were doing was very real, that demons walk among us, and that we're in danger of their wrath. Hey buddy, welcome to Season 3 of Tell Me More, the series where we explore the strange and unexplained. To be completely honest, demons scare me a little bit. I know that we've talked about ghosts and spirits on this channel before, but demons are something different. And in the off chance that they're real, I want to take this subject seriously. Even as a skeptic, there's a part of me that finds it hard to just instantly dismiss this idea. You already know that I sort of believe that hauntings and ghostly phenomenon exist, but when we start talking about a demonic realm where evil comes from, the most appropriate statement that I can make is, I hope that this phenomenon doesn't exist. I've read, listened, and spoken to several people who have stories that are more than just little bumps in the night. And that's pretty unsettling to me. It takes the fun idea of hauntings and ghosts from something that we should probably research and look further into, and turns it into something a little bit scarier that we should probably stay away from. Something that's toying with people, wrecking their lives, infesting their minds. What if possession isn't always some overly dramatic thing that only happens in the movies? What if it's actually the systematic destruction of people's lives from the inside out? What if the Warrens were right? After years of making videos arguing against silly dogmatic beliefs, I realized the irony to only now just turn around and tell you all that demons might be real. But maybe we shouldn't be throwing out the baby Jesus with the religious bathwater. You know what I'm saying? Maybe there's something to this. Something that's been kept secret from us for years. <laughs> In the 1970s, Ed and Lorraine Warren made a name for themselves by speaking publicly about their research into haunted houses and demonic activity. Though Ed would disagree that they're the same thing, one could argue that the popularity of modern ghost hunting can be traced back to the work that they had done on famous cases like the Annabelle doll. They'd been doing this since even before The Exorcist came out, the scariest film of all time. Ed would probably scoff at modern ghost hunting, warning people not to provoke spirits, and that's something that we're going to get into this season. Over the next few months, I want to ask questions like, what is demonology? Are demons real? Is it dangerous to interact with them or give them any attention at all? Is there an army of secret exorcists across the globe quietly dealing with possessions? I also want to explore some of the most famous cases of demonic hauntings. I'm going to completely change your idea about what ghosts are, what they're capable of, and when I'm done with this season, you'll likely never want to go on another ghost hunt again. To prepare for this, I've watched hours of Ed and Lorraine Warren's interviews, including several episodes of their cable access television show. That little girl, 13, started to go up on her toes, went off the floor, that means she levitated. And this dynamic couple had been featured in the media dozens of times in the 80s and even well into the 90s. They were considered the foremost experts on demonology. The Warrens gave countless lectures at universities and colleges across the United States, displaying slideshows of different spiritual phenomena, describing their operations and some of the hauntings that they've investigated over the years, teaching students the dangers of demons in the demonic realm. Their lectures were quite popular during the satanic panic. Lorraine claimed to have psychic abilities like reading auras, and Ed was a self-proclaimed a demonologist. His attitude towards spirits can be summed up best by one of his most famous quotes, nobody believes in ghosts, but everybody is afraid of them. Together, they were a paranormal force to be reckoned with. But who exactly were the Warrens? Born Edward Warren Miney, Ed claims to have grown up in a haunted house. His father, a simple man, tried his best to come up with logical explanations to make his family feel better about what they were witnessing, but Ed was convinced 
that he was experiencing demonic activity. Lorraine Rita Moran claimed that she had psychic abilities. From the age of nine, she says that she was able to read people's auras, being able to tell if they were lying, telling the truth, or just their general attitude or mood based on the color of the halo around their head. Apparently, she also had the gift of discernment, the ability to tell if a spirit's intentions were pure or nefarious. Essentially, she was able to instantly tell if a spirit was good or evil. This is apparently among one of God's greatest gifts. Ed and Lorraine first met at the tail end of the Second World War in the 1940s. They married in 1945, but Ed stayed in the Navy for several more years, still stationed in Japan in 1950 when Lorraine gave birth to their daughter, Judy. It wasn't much later that Ed began studying demonology. He worked under several different Catholic priests over the years, but he claims he didn't become a demonologist. He was born a demonologist. Ed apparently developed an adept understanding of spirits and demons, understanding their motivations, their powers, and the way that they operate. With Lorraine's psychic abilities, Ed's understanding of demonic phenomenon, and their shared devotion to the Catholic faith, they began investigating hauntings. In 1952, the Warrens founded the New England Society for Psychic Research, NESPER, New England's oldest ghost hunting organization. Paranormal research wasn't exactly the most popular subject in the 1950s, and even into the 1960s it wasn't really taken that seriously. Ed and Lorraine Warren would go almost completely unnoticed for 20 years quietly investigating paranormal phenomenon in the New England area and the world. It wasn't until after the movie The Exorcist, along with some high-profile cases in the 1970s, that Ed and Lorraine would finally start to make a name for themselves and launch into fame. The first was the Perrin family haunting in 1971. This was the inspiration for the first Conjuring movie. Roger and Carolyn Perrin moved into an old farmhouse that was previously owned by a family for for eight generations. Shortly after settling into the house, Carolyn and their five children began experiencing several paranormal phenomena, such as a broom that would teleport around the house, piles of dirt that would appear on newly cleaned floors, strange noises around the house, and the children seemed to be vividly aware of several spiritual presences in the home. The Warrens would visit the Perron household several times over a 10-year period, attempting to contact these spirits in an effort to evict them from the house with no success. There was apparently one spirit in particular, Bathsheba, who would cause the family the most problems. On their final attempt to contact this spirit, Ed and Lorraine conducted a seance where the mother began floating above the ground. Carolyn began speaking as if she was the spirit in a voice that didn't belong to her. The night that that happened, the father, Roger, kicked Ed and Lorraine out of the house, and they were never allowed to return. It's not entirely clear what happened after that point, but the family would eventually move out of that home in the early 1980s. However, Ed and Lorraine would investigate dozens, if not hundreds more cases after this, each more interesting and disturbing than the last. You guys know that I'm really into ghosts. Even at the height of my atheist phase, I was still pretty convinced that they were real. I always thought that Ed and Lorraine Warren were so cool. These enigmatic characters, investigators of the spooky and macabre, these strange cats roaming around to the world's most haunted locations, putting their stamp of approval on people's paranormal experiences. Now, I have some criticisms about the way that they operated, and I'm a little skeptical of some of the claims that they made. I'm sure a lot of you are. But before any of you start slamming them in the comments section, I just want to say that Lorraine Warren was a pure soul. <laughs> Leave her alone. <laughs> I actually believe that she genuinely thought that what she was doing was real and meaningful. I will not tolerate anybody making fun of her. Ed, on the other hand, had kind of a used car salesman vibe about him. The way that he would describe supernatural events was a little bit lackluster. It didn't seem to bother Ed too much that he wasn't able to prove a lot of the supernatural events that he was describing to us. But that's the thing, though. Ed didn't seem to be trying to prove ghosts were real. That wasn't his motive. In fact, he would often say, A skeptical public is the best protection that devils have, and devils do exist. And Ed was vividly aware that there were skeptics, people that not only didn't believe in hauntings, but would accuse Ed of lying and having no proof of his claims. And Ed would often bring this up. Anybody that can come to me, the first one, comes to me and proves that there was a hoax committed by the Lutzes, ourselves, Prentice Hall, the priest, and anybody else. 
Mm-hmm. In Amityville, I will give them three thousand dollars. Nobody has ever come to collect that money. But he wasn't really phased by this because even though he wasn't a psychic experiencer like his wife Lorraine, Ed had witnessed an exorbitant amount of spiritual activity in his time as an investigator. I don't really know if Ed's used car salesman thing was a sign of dishonesty or if it was just the way that men from Connecticut spoke in the 1960s. Maybe it was just part of his character. Ed and Lorraine were very involved in their local church. Not only did they have personal relationships with several Catholic priests, but they would often bring victims of demonic possession to their church to be exercised. After founding Nesper, the couple would begin hunting down supposed cases of demonic possession around the world, of which there are apparently several different kinds. When a demon haunts a house, that's also a type of possession. Demons can also possess inanimate objects, like the famous Annabelle doll. Annabelle is a raggedy Ann doll that would apparently scratch people, cause them to have nightmares, and was known to move around, stand up, and even levitate on occasion. Usually, when a family believed themselves to be harassed by a ghost or a demonic entity, they would contact the Warrens to come and help them. The main purpose the purpose of their investigations, according to Ed and Lorraine, was to collect information on claims of hauntings, to determine the severity and validity of a haunting, interview families affected by spirits, and witness and record evidence of paranormal activity, all to determine if a priest is either needed to bless a home or needed for an exorcism. It was common for the Warrens to stay with the family while investigating their house, living in their home for the duration of their investigation, trying to immerse themselves in the phenomenon, sometimes for weeks at a time, which, if you think about it, is exactly what you would have to do, because it would take more than just a couple of nights to catalog a wide variety of supernatural experiences, and it's not like demonic phenomenon happen every night. They would openly challenge these demons to reveal themselves, provoking them to affect items in the home, to make noises, make it clear that they're really there, in an attempt to build a body of evidence to prove to a priest that an evil presence is plaguing a family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to reveal your identity. Don't ever do that, by the way. Ed would warn vehemently against people challenging demons, claiming that it would almost certainly lead to harm. Ed says that he was only able to do this because he was specially trained to handle demons. Apparently normal people are much more susceptible to their wrath. And these demons will wait days, weeks, months, even years to get their revenge on you. Time is meaningless to them, and they'll wait until you least suspect it when you're at your weakest to attack you. I can't say for sure if what they tell us about demons is true. There's some debate about the sincerity of their operation and the validity of their evidence. The biggest problem that I have, obviously, is that Ed and Lorraine have presented the general public very little in the way of evidence to prove any of the stories that they've told. Most of what we have are just anecdotes told by them and the families affected by these demonic possessions. The thing is though, that they never said that they set out to prove to the masses that spirits were real. That was never in their mission statement. One could argue that they didn't catalog their evidence for public scrutiny because it didn't matter to them if the general public believed what they were doing was real or not. They didn't collect their evidence for us. They collect their evidence for priests. They did what they did to help people. That's what mattered to them. Ed and Lorraine made a good deal of money in their career as demonologists. And I mean, everyone has to eat, right? But there was a little bit of shadiness in the way that they acquired their funds. The Warrens wrote and commissioned several books over the years describing all of their paranormal experiences, but according to one of their ghost writers, several of the details in these books were fabricated. Ed had a huge ego, and I think that that's pretty obvious, but that ego would manifest in their investigations. He would sometimes show up to supposed haunted houses unannounced and uninvited. He would impose himself on the family, completely take over whatever investigations were already underway as if he was the absolute global authority on the subject, an officer of the church with a duty to enter people's homes to investigate demonic activity. And then afterwards, he would have a book written or a movie produced about the event as if it was entirely factual but with no proof. 
just stories. And they would often leave the investigation with a new trinket to take home and place in their macabre museum of possessed items. It isn't open anymore because of a zoning issue, but they ran this museum out of their home for decades and invite fans of theirs and interested parties to wade through their collection of possessed items, including the infamous Annabelle doll, locked in a glass case. The real-life story that The Conjuring 2 is based on is a perfect example of this. A family in the United Kingdom was apparently experiencing a plethora of demonic activity in their small home. One of the children, an 11-year-old girl, was seen levitating above her bed several times at night and would frequently speak in a demonic voice. Is anybody there? No. No. Who's there? Doctor. Doctor Who? A lot of people remember this as a staple example of an Ed and Lorraine Warren case. However, they actually showed up without being invited, and they only stayed one day before they were asked to leave. They only knew about this case because it had already caused a huge storm in the media. They may have only shown up to either gain notoriety or gain credibility as ghost hunters using a popular paranormal event that was, at the time, generally accepted by the public to be true. But. Get this, out of the dozens of people whose homes that they investigated, sometimes staying there for weeks at a time, the Warrens never once asked for any money. They always did it for free. And think about it, how bad would things have to be in order to invite people to come stay at your home? I wouldn't want strangers staying in my house with my wife and kids for weeks at a time. If it came to that, I imagine that the situation must have gotten pretty serious. Or maybe these victims were really hoaxers and Ed and Lorraine Warren were in on it. Like I said, the vast majority of these cases require us to take Ed, Lorraine, and the families affected on their word that what they experienced was genuine. So many of these cases received a ridiculous amount of media attention, especially in the 70s. People got famous, the Warrens gained notoriety, and a good deal of them seemed to pop up after the popularity of the Exorcist film, as if they were copycat incidents. Was something else going on here? Tell me what you guys think. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this introduction into the world of demonology and Ed and Lorraine Warren's investigations. If you did, make sure to check out the Tell Me More playlists for hours of content to keep you entertained and thinking. I also have a second channel, Armored Gregory, where I make vlogs responding to some of my favorite comments. And check out our podcast, Full Metal Tuxedo, where my co-writer Patrice and I talk more about the kind of stuff we talk about on this show, The Strange and Unexplained. And check out the ExpressVPN affiliate link, expressvpn.com slash skeptic to see how you can get three months for free on their VPN service. Become a patron today to join our Discord community. And of course, I have to thank my patrons and my channel members for supporting my content. I couldn't do this without you. You're amazing. <laughs>